Good afternoon. We hope and pray that everyone is well and keeping safe. We would like to call your attention to the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 3, beginning at verse 1. The Bible reads in Ecclesiastes chapter 3 from the New King James Version, To everything there is a season, and a time to every purpose under the heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to plant up that which is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and, and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to get and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to cast away, a time to rend and a time to sow, a time to keep silence and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time of war and a time of peace. What profit hath he that worketh in that wherein he laboreth? I have seen, I have seen the, the travail which God hath given to the sons of men to be exercised in it. We want to use these words. Praise God for your season. Praise God for your season. There are some situations in life that we can't seem to shake out of our minds. All of us have experiences that we wish we could take back. There are some things we wish we could forget about. These are signs and wonders and sometimes place in our life to help us never forget that God is ultimately in control. When we reflect, we begin to realize that there is a season for everything, but it still does not stop us from asking why. Humans have been asking the three letter word why for centuries. The book of Ecclesiastes is one of the most puzzling and troubling in all the Bible. The writer writes with such extreme pessimisms, believed to be to believe to have been written by King Solomon, who was a man of much wealth and wisdom. It borders into a body of literature who is written by someone who one minute is depressed and the next minute is very happy. It makes sense on one hand because Solomon, the Bible says, has it all. But then he loses it all because he takes his heart, his mind and his soul away from God. If we were billionaires today and rich in heart, mind and soul today, but spiritually bankrupt in heart, mind and soul tomorrow, uh, wouldn't we all be depressed? If we were so rich that nobody was really our friend, if we were so rich that nobody loved us for loved us for us and everybody befriended us for for what we have instead of who we are, wouldn't we be down and out and depressed? So Solomon asked the Lord for wisdom and God gave it to him and more. But the riches and the excesses caused him to reflect and think deeply about life. When we think deeply about life, it causes us to not care so much about certain things. But when we reflect about our lives after we laugh at ourselves and then take ourselves too seriously and then regret our decisions and then realize that we can't change what we can't change and then we see and sense the hand of God in the good the bad and the ugly what Ecclesiastes does do is ask some powerful yet important questions. The writer of Ecclesiastes is literally a philosopher. A philosopher is someone who a, a, a philosopher is a lover of wisdom. Uh, he challenges the status quo. He asks questions that make you think. He asks questions that make you say, hmm. He asks questions that challenge us as human beings and believers in God. The writer is a man who has wrestled with God in his mind uh, to make sense of the world. I think there are some people here who, who understand and who have wrestled with God. We've done right and we've sure enough done some wrong. We've been up, we've been down, we've been under and over, down and out. But when we pull it all together and think about all that we have experienced, we can see that God's love and steadfast mercy does endure forever. We believe Solomon is the writer of the book of Ecclesiastes, but his name in the Bible is known as Kehileth. Kehileth means preacher and is the name by which the author of the book of Ecclesiastes is known. And so in that first chapter of Ecclesiastes, he, he asked, what profit has a person or a man from all his labor in which he toils under the sun? What do we gain from our labor? At the end of the day, what does our hard work 
bring us. Some may say stress, some may say bills, but the reality is our work, our labor, and our toil, it puts food on our table and clothes on our back and shelter over our head. Uh, the reality of work is that we have to work, amen, to have sense of meaning and purpose. But our toil brings a sense of peace of mind and stability. But when we leave this place, we can't take any of that with us. That is why we should enjoy what we earn and build and buy, but with limitations knowing that we can't take any of it with us when we leave this place. He says, one generation passes away and another generation comes, but the earth abides and lives forever. This is practical insight on a life that has had many experiences. One generation comes and goes because life is a cycle. Spirits and souls in physical bodies grace this place and then they leave. This statement from Kehileth or Solomon lets us know that families come and go and they grow and grow and grow and one day they leave. We are born, we live and we pass on wisdom to those who come behind us. But at some point in life, all of us will be predecessors and ancestors. We, we, we will become seasoned sages full of wisdom and insight. When we come and we go, we come and we go, but the key is to leave this place, this earth, this space, a better place. Then he says in chapter one, the wind goes toward the south and turns around to the north. The wind swirls around continually and comes again on its circuit. All the rivers run into the sea, yet the sea is not full. Here the writer tells us about nature. Have you ever noticed that even in famines and droughts, the oceans seem to replenish themselves? Uh, the wind, the rain, the heat, and the changing of the seasons, the oceans never fails. We have failed the ocean. We have torn up our environment. We've had oil spills and toxic waste dumps in the ocean, yet God still replenishes and God still blesses his children. Unlike the water, Unlike the water, we leave this place. But now in 2020, in the midst of this coronavirus, uh, we can't seem uh, to get it together. Uh, life has interrupted, uh, life has interrupted our routine for the past two weeks. And, and there are some who feel like giving up. If we don't learn anything else from this virus, we must learn that we must take care of the Lord's resources. We must take care of the Lord's earth and we must take care of one another. So as we look at Ecclesiastes chapter three, uh, the writer says in everything there is a season. Khalilith, the preacher, King Solomon, the wisest and richest man on earth, uh, who is the son of David and the father of Rehoboam, he is now talking about the changing of the seasons. He's not talking about summer and winter and spring and fall. He's not talking about the seasons when we plant tomatoes and okra. He's not talking about the seasons when we plant zucchini and cucumbers and peppers and collards and kale and field peas. He's not talking about the football season or the basketball season or the baseball season. He's talking about infancy and, and toddlerhood and childhood and our preteen years. And he's talking about uh, our teenage Age years. He's talking about young adulthood and middle age years and middle age and our senior years. He's talking about the seasons of life. It's your season. It is everyone's season. All of us have seasons. It's our season and my season and all of our seasons are different. The key is knowing your season, living your season and embracing your season, appreciating your season. God gives us seasons. God ordains seasons. Life is about living in your season and understanding what God wants you to do in the midst of your season. So the writer in Khalilith makes it plain to us, if to everything there is a season. Why does the writer say it this way? Who is Khalilith talking to and why? Yeah, yeah, he, Solomon is talking because he knows that there are seasons. Uh, certainly in, in Solomon's life, he's had some good seasons and, and some bad seasons. We got to thank God that Solomon asked the Lord for wisdom early in his life, early in this season, and God granted him his wish. I wish that more young people understood seasons, seasons and timing. Uh, there is a season for everything. Uh, there is a season to dance and party. Uh, but that season is not our entire life. A 
season to gain and a season to lose, a season or a time to weep and a time to laugh. Uh, so the writer challenges us and makes us look at our life and our value system. Uh, the writer causes us to rethink why we did what we did when we did it and why. And the writer, as we reflect on life, he points us to God. Remember, in everything, there is a season and God is present with us in that season. We ought to make the best of our season. We ought to encourage others in their season. When we understand our season, we know that God is part of our season. Uh, the Bible says the grass withereth and the flower fadeth, but the word of our God shall stand forever. Uh, we ought to celebrate our season, even in the midst of our season of having to stay away from one another, even in this season of social distancing, uh, we ought to recognize that God is still in the midst. Uh, that's why the songwriter said time is filled with swift transition. Not of earth unmoved can stand. Uh, build your hopes on things eternal. Hold to God's unchanging hand. Hold to his hand, God's unchanging hand. Hold to his hand, God's unchanging hand. Build your hopes on things eternal. Hold to God's unchanging hand. Let us pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us for our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. We hope you enjoyed this message and are hearing and sensing from God that you need to respond. I want to let you know that you can respond and you can build your hopes on things eternal. You can ask God to be a part of your life. The Bible says if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Christ was raised from the dead, you can be saved. If you desire salvation, I want you to pray this prayer with me. I want you to know that salvation simply means divine deliverance from sin. If you desire salvation, let's pray together. Lord, I confess my sins and ask for your forgiveness. Please come into my heart as my Lord and Savior. Take complete control of my life and help me to walk in your footsteps daily by the power of your spirit. Thank you, Lord, for saving me and for answering my prayer. God, from this day forward, I know that I am saved. In Jesus' name, amen. The Reed Chapel family is here for you. The pastors, ministers, and leaders of Reed Chapel are praying for you daily. Do not hesitate to call us. If you enjoyed this broadcast, feel free to let us know by calling us at 803-786-0701 or emailing us at pastorgrady at att.net. If you enjoyed this ministry, please support it through your gift of giving. All members are encouraged to give their tithes and offerings throughout this crisis. Members can give electronically at the church website, www.readchapel.org. You can give online at givelify.com. On the screen, there's also a personal link to our Read Chapel giving through Givelify. You can also give through your personal bank, through your personal bill pay. You can come to the church office Tuesday through Thursday from 11 to 2 by appointment only to drop off your gifts. Or you can mail your gift to Reed Chapel AME Church, 704 Gabriel Street, Columbia, South Carolina, 29203. Remember, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. Remember these words, if you pray, don't worry. If you worry, don't pray.